Do you want some like Advil cold and sinus or something? That stuff works real well. Really? Yeah. Fuck, I'm just. Awesome. Just doing this. Lens, one sec. Yeah. Like you're gonna be real happy with that. <laughs> Do you need to get you some tissues? I got a few of them. Yeah, Stick them in my pouch. Oh, gracias. Can you could take it with you? You got enough tissues, or should I get some to get us started? Can you get to get us started? Yeah. Go, buddy. Scoop doo, blue. Scoop dee. Oh yeah. Nobody's pleased. With my room. Why not? Except for me, I get mine. Do you? Oh yeah. So, so this is a mission. <laughs> oh gosh! Rick. So you go soft a lot. Uh, I go soft in the paint, dog. What does that mean? Like a uh, metaphor. Back you don't play what strong in the paint. No, no, no I'm, a, I'm a long range shooter. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting way of saying that you're good at shooting by talking about how bad you are in the paint. Yeah, it just means that I masturbate and look at it from a distance. Are you comfortable talking about the the Viagra stuff for a little bit? No, that was a joke. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Funny stuff. <laughs> Are you think I want to talk about that on your podcast? I don't know, man. You've been blowing your nose, all, you know, since you got here. I didn't think how you looked was uh, really an issue. Oh well, yeah, if I'm, I'm sick, you can't help that. You're right. You can't. And, and I'm not busting your balls about it either. I'm just saying. I, it's literally what you're doing. You're giving me such a hard time about my ailments. Rick, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch that right away. I want to make you feel as safe and comfortable as possible. Rick, on any given Sunday, your boy show up, and your boy show out. <laughs> Let's get it going. Or am I one of your best friends? Maybe top three. Yeah, right. Maybe top four. That I believe. Yeah, I can <laughs> you're easily top two most genuine friends. Is that real? Yeah. Even or your friends aren't genuine, or I'm just extra genuine. You're just extra genuine. Like Rick, you do things like you're you do th you do things like when I come in your house, you make me take your shoes off. I have friends who would want me to take their shoes off, but wouldn't tell me to take my shoes off because maybe they're like, eh, I don't want, I don't know. People eggshell walk sometimes. So you're saying it's genuine is just being, like, saying truest, what I feel and what I want. You don't necessarily mean that as kind. And, and kind, obviously. I think that's an obvious thing, Rick. I think you're one of the most kind. You, you, you're top one kindest people. Wow. You know, because... You no, actually, I take that back. No, sometimes you're a piece of shit. See, because you tell me that a lot. Yeah, you are sometimes a... You, you know what? Oh, no. Let's rewind the whole okay. kind thing. We could do that. Genuine for sure. Sure. You are one of the biggest assholes. You mean that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it's not, in, it's not 100% in a bad way. It's like... It's you're just being you. Some people like put a, it's the genuine part. Some people put a filter up and you're like, what filter? What do you want in a friend? Um, I don't know. Someone who's available. Someone who is, uh, is like-minded. Could, could you expand on available? Like I'm busy a lot and I don't like doing much. So when I'm not working, I like being at home. Uh -huh. And every once in a while I want to go out. Somebody who's available to go hang out every once in a while and doesn't expect it to be like every single day or... So you mean literally available as far as their schedule is concerned? Schedule. You're not talking emotional availability. No, nah, I don't care about those things. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, I have, I, have, I have women friends in my life for that. You don't have guy friends that are emotionally available for you? They are, but I don't really care to get too emotionally available with C my guy friends. Like how you didn't want to talk to me about how you have a soft problem. I don't have a soft problem, right? Everyone has a soft problem, and if they don't, they got a hard dick problem as far as I'm concerned. Well, consider me <laughs> hard dick problem. HDP? HDP. Lamorne, you're one of the funniest people I know. Oh, thank you, Rick. Richard. But when you're not being funny, mm -hmm. I'm out. It's intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm not being funny, you're afraid. How, do you do a lot of podcasts? Uh, from time to time, you've done like four with me. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I've done all your trial podcasts. Yeah. and I think every time I do it, I'm usually like in the beginning stages, and they don't beginning work. Stages. Like you'll say, I want to start this podcast. Oh, all podcast. Of, there's only been beginning stages. Yeah, but this right now, you're going. Yeah, this is, this and that's is why it's successful. Is because I wasn't in the beginning stages. I love the podcasts we did together. There was one of them that we did that you helped. We called all the local businesses trying to get me sponsored. <laughs> 
so stupid. And you were you were you had no ego with it with or only ego. I don't know which one it is, but I'm Lamorne from New Girl, and here's what I'm telling you: I have this many followers. <laughs> Did it work? I, I don't. I never followed no. up. Nobody. No. Oh, I never followed up either. Maybe they were like waiting for the call. They were super excited. Rick, you know you have sp- sponsorship deals, right? When you do commercials and you do all those things, right? Like you could call those people and they could sponsor your podcast. You're saying the commercials I have done? Yeah. Like call McDonald's and say, hey, I'm doing this podcast. I call, I've call. i called tons of local McDonald's. No, don't call Mc- <laughs> local McDonald's. Dude named Jerome owns one of them. He doesn't know shit about this. Call corporate. They know corporate knows people who are franchising don't know you and i both have worked with bmo harris bank shout out to harris bank shout out to bmo well i'm gonna show a clip bmo harris always has high savings rates to help your money grow faster really absolutely so your money could be going places even when you're not like a puppy you mean like a baby dog and we're back so let's talk about the commercial you just saw which one was it? You were in a pool with a desk, probably? Uh, yeah, shout out to the pool and the desk. That's never been done before. Uh, I'm all about firsts here. Uh, we were floating in a desk. I can't swim, by the way. Is that racist for you to say? No, it's factu- factual. Okay. You know what I mean? It's racist like, for me to say. It's racist for you to assume. say it, ass- to assume it. Yeah. Right. You know, they say assumptions make you racist. Yes. Sometimes. Out of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, us. <laughs> Both of us. Yeah, because yes. we're the same obviously well i wouldn't say that well i would i just didn't think of it in time okay <laughs> i'm just well in terms of like be it, it, like i can't swim i actually cannot swim as in if you fell overboard and nobody helped you you drown or you just aren't eloquent I, your... i'm not eloquent at all meaning i could put it depends on the body of water if we're in the ocean mm. i could probably i could possibly drown all that movement mm. i don't i'm afraid of that in a pool i could put, i could save myself you could probably walk walk on the bottom get to the bottom and push myself off <laughs> with such <laughs> <Just> power <laughs> i don't you know what the fucked up thing is i don't think i could walk underwater because i think every time i took a step i'd float yeah that, but then i can't float when i need to Floating is one of those interesting things that you either have it when you need it or whatever the fuck. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. yeah I like, think so. <laughs> floating is one of those things that only benefits you when you want it. But sometimes floating is not a good thing. No, 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 not at all. When would you say, other than walking at the bottom of a pool, when would you say floating is a bad thing? When you take your shit and that one piece that just won't go down. Right. Just floater. Right. Straight at the top. Do you ever poop out of the, to- you ever poop where it comes out of the toilet, out of the water? Yeah, you think it went down. You leave. You wash your hands. Somebody goes in behind you. Mm. you know, oh, my God. You left the floater. That's embarrassing because you didn't double back. And check. That doesn't embarrass me. Really? I've done it too much. <laughs> you, I feel like you do it intentionally, though. Listen, I, I, on, a, on a subconscious level, I don't think we do anything unintentionally. But I don't plan on leaving shit for somebody. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> you know, I, I'm only in such control of a bowel movement. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I meant you ever poop to where the poop is in the water and it's so much that it comes out of the water. Rick, that's impossible. This is not a cartoon. I, I, I will if I could find it, I have it in my in my Blackberry, I'll put it up here. I remember I took a shit that I sent to my parents. This was in college. And I've done it since, but this was the only one I took a picture of. Out of the toy out of the water. It was where, such a long log. It wasn't just a log. It kind of looked like a piled. Um, it was a pile. It was like yeah. the emoji. It was the emoji, but with a frown instead of a smiley face. <laughs> it was a different time, Lamorne. What do you mean? Like, were you eating more back then? Dude, yes. In college, I was... Uh, you big boy? I was the man. <laughs> I was just eating a lot and taking a lot of dumps and trying, like, different supplements, like nitrous oxide to get stuff going. And what the... F- I was just, you know, you know me. You know I'm a fucking baller, dude. In college, it was insane. I... Dude, and for those of you listening on the audio only, you won't know, but YouTube, you could see. <laughs> Is that your dab fake? I don't know, man. <laughs> That's not how you play basketball. Yeah. Rick, I've seen you play basketball. You're really good. Thank you. To that, the camera. Rick, I've seen you play basketball. You are really good. Well, if you chew the camera, you talk to the people. To the people, Rick. You are. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now no, I'm I all appreciate turned it. I appreciate it. <laughs> I would say the same about you. Yeah. But you're, you know, I, I. But that's not your strength. That is my strength. Well, Rick, Rick, you I know you love the game. Rick, you don't, you don't want to see me on the court. It's, it's a, it'll be. Let's put this out there now. I'll play Rick one on one. He's taller than me, so he might beat me, but it won't. But it will be close. He is a better basketball player than me. I will say that. I just don't play. But it won't be. It, but it won't be a big gap. If we go to eleven, all right, eleven. 
make it take it make it make it take it ones and twos yep you start with a ball you don't score three points on top of what you just said Hmm. i'll also put money on that okay how much i don't know a thousand dollars i will do that so a thousand bucks you said i won't score three points You'll score three. You, you, I give you three points. So that's it. At the, at, at the, at the, I will have 11 before you have four. Okay, deal. Okay. And, and we'll I get cut the to the clip. <laughs> and we're back. I am really... You were on your game, man. Where's my money? I, uh, I'll take Venmo. I only have PayPal. I won't take PayPal. They, they logged me out of my account. All right, double or nothing then. <laughs> and we're back. Fuck, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't know how you had that first thing. Oh, shit. Lamorne, mm-hmm. you love basketball. You and I love basketball. Mm-hmm. I'm from Cleveland. You're not, but no one would know that for the type of LeBron fan that you are. Right. And you made a short film. Mm-hmm. What's it, what was it called? Uh, the Crossover, The Tale of Larry Moses Bryant. Yeah, I would like to, if, with your permission, can I show a little bit of it? Mm-hmm. Will you explain what this is? Um, it's it's so funny, by the way, too. So uh, check this out. On, I'm assuming you have it on YouTube or something somewhere. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. but I'll put up a clip. Let's set it up real quick. So uh, essentially, 20 years ago, LeBron was crossed over by one of his peers. That's right. I remember hearing about this. Exactly. So everyone knew about it. Yeah. But LeBron has been burying the truth. Well, he was imp- probably embarrassing for him, right? 100%. Right. You know, the Kingslayer right, is the what king- he's called. Oh, yes, yeah, yes. The Kingslayer has made his return 20 years later, and he wants to let the world know in a documentary piece. Oh, right. They made a documentary about it, right? Yeah. Great. And we, we'll say we'll cut to a clip, but look to camera and say we'll cut to a clip and snap your fingers. Okay. We are now about to cut to a clip. Can you go ahead and give me a few words for sound, please? Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, and now, from Akron, Ohio. Let's, let's just start with your name. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, my name is Lawrence Moses Let, Bryant. Larry. Oh, sorry. My name is uh, Lawrence Moses Bryant, uh, 33 in the age. And uh, most people, most people call me the Kingslayer. Y'all got that? The Kingslayer. All right, now here's where it's playing, so now nobody's listening to this. Mm-hmm. Um, you do have a problem staying erect, right? No, 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 no. What happens is when I'm in the vagina, uh-huh. I get soft. Right. Because I'm thinking about other things. Are you thinking about other things like work or th- performance stuff? Because I, when I think, when I'm thinking about, there's only one jig here. Your boy needs two. Damn, is that true? Yeah, and it's embarrassing. So when you have two, you don't go soft, or do you think you need three? No, when I when I have two, depending on the amount of times we do it, I'll go soft as well. Okay, and we're back. <laughs> That was really funny. Hey, I yeah, I know. It's such a good clip. Such yeah, a good you clip. looked rock hard in that, my friend. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah, Thank for you. sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, but going soft, man, it's a real thing. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, well, this is now rolling. You're supposed to. No, I'm talking about when you said, oh, it is. It's a thing, man. <laughs> It's a thing. Going soft is a thing. I've talked about it on the podcast before, and I don't want to throw you under a bus. Why are we but talking I, about I've heard from a lot of girls that yeah, you, have a, right. you have a problem. Yeah. Not that you can't. You know, it's just that sometimes it happens. <laughs> and when you're when you're going, so sometimes sometimes I'm I'm not soft yet. But you know, when you're and I, I'm thinking to myself, well, this is it's, I'm going about. To, I'm, and then once you think that you're about to go, why soft, do you have this issue? What do you think? It happened to me once. And I'm now, it's basically, it's trauma. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's trauma. It's it's people who play with an ankle brace because they sprained their ankle once 20 years ago. Right, right, right. I, oh, I, I, went, uh, I went out with this girl that I met that night. Mm-hmm. And I said, I invited her to go to Vegas. And she said yes. And we drove to Vegas that night. Mm-hmm. We got to the win at four in the morning. The entire time, I was nervous that I wouldn't be able to have sex with her because this was the first girl I was with since a previous ex of mine where we didn't wear condoms. I'm mm. scared of wearing condoms. You're scared. I even hit up a buddy of mine who sells Coke to see if he has a Viagra prescription hookup in Vegas. He didn't. Oh, wow. Okay. But he had Coke. So I got, I did so much blow. <laughs> <laughs> no, so yeah, so I was with her and I was just so scared that I wouldn't be able to get hard or stay hard mm. that I kind of like... I didn't. I remember that when we were sleeping, we, I just met her. We're sleeping in the same bed. We're in Vegas together. She would have at least kissed me. Right. I was too scared to spoon with her because I didn't want her to feel my mushy dick up against her fucking delicious butthole. So you thought, I'm gonna. You thought that if you pushed your your soft smushy dick on her, 
th- that that she would want to have sex no, and no, that no. you wouldn't be no, able no. to. No, see, I have this little bit of fear that that if a girl ever, I, I've talked about my penis so much on this podcast, so I why know. stop now? I know. But the difference between my soft cock and my hard cock is the difference between you on the court and me on the court. They're both cocks, but one of them is unbelievable, and the other one just is soft in the paint. Do you know what I mean? But I'm really good, though, Rick. It's still a nice soft dick, but it's a soft dick. I don't like the way I'm talking. I'm yeah. feeling insecure now. Yeah, you should feel insecure because this is going to be something that you're going to want to edit out because it's not going anywhere. And all you're doing is talking about your dick. Yeah, I'm not, I don't want to talk about it. I'm not going to edit it out, but I don't want to talk about it anymore. So all you're talking about is your soft dick up against a pretty girl <laughs> and that won't get hard. And, and, and you're in Vegas. And you, you did all of this. <laughs> you did all of this just to rub a soft dick on her butt. No, and then you did a, and then you did so much blow. No, I, I've and then never you done played coke. basketball afterwards. Rocked it. <laughs> never done coke. And no, I, I'm saying I didn't spoon her because I feel like a, I, I feel like a, when I'm with a new girl, mm-hmm. if she ever sees me soft, she's gonna think I'm a dork. Yeah, that's usually how it works. Yeah, so I'm like, I don't want her to know that I'm soft. So you just you sleep over there, I'll sleep over here. So you mean to tell me like. Even going into it, you just knew that you weren't going to get hard. I This was the first time it happened. It, it didn't even happen yet. I was so scared I was going to go soft, I didn't even give myself the opportunity to go soft because I was never hard. But how is that the first time it happened if you would have this fear? Beca- because Fear comes from experience. Yeah, because I'm, so I'm, I'm in a relationship and mm-hmm. we're sleeping together and everything's great. You could say I rocked her world. I wouldn't, but she would. Maybe. Maybe Point not. being, mm-hmm. now, I'm in, now I'm done and now it's this is the first time I've ever like going out into the world and be like, I'm going to start like hooking up with chicks. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try this instead of just dating them. And this mm-hmm. girl at the time, I this was the most beautiful girl I'd ever, this was like, I remember I talked about this on stage years ago, but it was, it, she looked like the Spencer's gift poster that said got milk where I saw a bottom tit for the first time. Oh, hey, yeah. hey. So I felt like, what is this girl doing with me? She's, she's, you know. Well, you're Rick. Appreciate that. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, ah. I'm not going to be, I'm, and I just made a decision. I remember being in the lobby. It was 4 a.m. at the win. I remember being in the lobby, worried that I was soft in the lobby. <laughs> like I should be fucking rock hard saying, give me a queen bed instead of two twins. But anyway, let's please talk tell, about you. Please tell me you got two twin beds. No, no, we got a queen. <laughs> if we got two made. twins, it wouldn't have been a problem. <laughs> I remember in the morning she said, uh, uh, she was like getting a little close to me and, and I thought, Oh, God forbid this beautiful girl wants to blow me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, we should go get massages. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, you know what, Rick? You did the right thing. Thank you. You did the right thing. Because you just said you came out of a relationship where you weren't wearing condoms. And then you were about to go and, like, smash this girl without getting tested first. Well, I was. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have sex with her without a condom. But it didn't matter. Condoms break, Rick. And then you're out there going raw dog and strangers in Vegas. Mm. Which is actually the name of my special. <laughs> All right. I don't know how much of this I'm cutting out. I do think it's fun, but I'm talking about my dick so much. And uh, let's talk about yours for a little bit. So, we don't have to. Yeah. So tell me about your love life. Um, my love life is fairly non existent. Oh, you're one of those guys that has to sell something publicly. What do you mean? I understand. I mean, it's a fine line because you're a friend of mine and I don't want to pry, but no, I've gotten some messages from you. I'm just I'm just a simple man, Rick. Well, who isn't? You? Yeah, I'm complex. I know. <laughs> Me, there's nothing going on in here. Yeah, that's kind of what you have. You have this thing that you have this like I'm an idiot character <laughs> that is too dumb to be to be that consistently dumb. Yeah. <laughs> you have to know what you're doing. I don't. I'm really an idiot. I mean, it, that 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 dumb paid for the watch and that necklace. Take that necklace out of your shirt for a second. How did, how much did that cost? This uh, like, I don't know, 30-something. 30 30-something 30 bucks? Yeah, sure. <laughs> $30,000. Jeez. Uh, hey, man, shout out to Renvy. Renvy Jewelry. Do you think you could get me sponsored with them? Absolutely. Is that for real? I'll wear some shit? Yeah. Here, give a little 30-second uh, plug to Renvy. Renvy! <laughs> wearing these jewels make you the envy of the town. Shine, shine, bitch, shine, shine down. That was good. Hey. <laughs> okay. And we'll be right back. I, I, honestly, I could have hit better notes had I not been congested. I mean, I've heard you saying you have a really good voice. Yeah, I'm one of the more classically trained actors out there. We've actually done some. You've helped produce a song of mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Doc. And that song was aggressive, Rick. Yeah. You weren't singing. You were, you know. Well, we'll show a little clip. 
and we're back. No, you gotta sh- cut to it first. <laughs> cut to the clip first. Eat my butt. You shoot from too far. Eat my butt. But you make it every time. No shit, slut. I'm the fucking man. Ball is life. Ball is my wife. How I hesitate with no pain, with no strife. Just give me the rock. It's my therapy. Give me the hezzy, then I'll pop a three. Bitch. I'm the man, motherfucker. I win trophies. You a stand ass sucker. I got a big ass dick. I grab titties and I fuck bitches' clips. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and back from the clip. Yeah. And if you want to see more, I think I'm going to start a Patreon account, so I'll put it there. <laughs> you can find that link here. <laughs> and we're back from the link. It takes me so long to edit this stuff, dude. And just <laughs> by creating more, you know what I mean? <laughs> Every time I snap, you have to go to uh, something? I get to go to something. I've, I've changed my vernacular to stop saying I have to do things and start to say I get to do things, which just the language makes me start to appreciate things more, and that's kind of real. That makes sense, dude. Does it? That makes sense. Does it make you sense? You get to do things. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I friends, oh, I gotta go to fucking this thing. And it's like, no, you get to, like, you get to do this thing. Right. You know, you get to go do a show at its place. At, I mean, this is why we, we, are, we moved here, you know? Right. 100%. I, but I'll be honest with you. I had to come here. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to have you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I heard this, um, there was, I don't remember what this tribe was, but it was some indigenous tribe that they don't, in their language, they don't have a word for left or right. And with that, they have to use north, south, east, west. So I have this in my, I have this in, this would be in my north hand, right? Wow. Which is really crazy, but because that's what their language is, they're, that's how they actually think. So their sense of direction, because of language, is built in. And hearing that, that kind, I've kind of expanded on that and thought about how we literally think in the words that have been given to us. Right. And we th- our language kind of is a ceiling to the way we see things. Right. And uh, so I try to find little ways of, of changing certain words to, to alter the perspective. So, for example. Rick. No, not your name. <laughs> I, was, I thought you were going like, to lead, lead me to Oh, that's the, what I was saying, the, that, the, the get to. Right. So you get, to, oh, and you that know, can change your perspective simply on, I understand. Yeah, that. but just by the way we talk to ourselves and saying, oh, I get to go do this thing. It's like, oh, it's like an opportunity. Right. Another one that I do is, is um, I say, th- I say, th- I've, a lot of these I've I've like kind of doctored from other things that I've heard or seen, but I say thank you more than I than I apologize. I do apologize if I've done something mm-hmm. wrong, but like I find that an apology puts something on the other person. So if you're fi- if I'm five minutes late, I should acknowledge it. But instead of saying I'm so sorry, which makes you have to then say you you have a responsibility to forgive me, I say oh thank you so much for being patient. I shouldn't have done this. You know what I'm saying? Right. Still acknowledging it, but giving you the win. Anyway. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. When I walked in here, Rick, mm-hmm. I did not apologize for being late. No, you, you texted me. You told me you were running a little late. Right. So you knew that I was going to be late. Yes. So that didn't bother you at all. Well, I don't... I, let, let me find a, a way where I could say this. I'm not surprised that you can't swim. I wasn't shocked that you were late. Because I know you. So you're saying you're, I'm acting my skin color. You're you saying we're always late and what we can't swim. No, I'm saying you're you're usually you said, late. I'm not surprised you can't swim. I'm not surprised you're late. Yeah. These are why'd you put them both in the same category? Because you've been late every time you've come here. They're both stereotypes, Rick. I don't know what you're talking and about. Rick, I think ev- you're a bad basketball player. And Rick, every time I come here, these are three insults. And every, <laughs> time, <laughs> and every time I come here, Rick, it's for an obligation that I get to do. Yeah. So I'm gonna be late. I'm okay with it. You know why I'm going to be late? Yeah. Because I do what I want. Why else? Because <laughs> I want what I do. Tell me two more. <laughs> and I don't want to be here. Really? I do. Okay. I do. And you always give me free things. What do I give you? Sometimes you give me like weed. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you give me like coffee. you order coffee. I, once, I almost gave you shoes, but they didn't fit. That's right. That's right. They were way too big. Yeah. For Rick, you. Rick got that. You know what I mean? I get to have a big foot. He gets to have a big foot. Lamorne, you did a BMO Harris Bank commercial. Yeah, let's shout out to BMO. BMO. Yeah. Call him BMO. BMO. Yeah. Uh, I did a, I did a, uh, a commercial for them. I did about them. five of them. About yeah, five. you did. Yeah. You had a campaign. Yeah. What does that pay? Uh, a lot of money. Do you, are you comfortable talking about numbers on no. public things? No, no, not at all. Uh, compare that money to uh, New Girl. Um, An episode of New Girl pays more or less than 
these these commercials that you did? Less. Uh, and how many days did you work on this commercial? Uh, I did about three days. Three days. Yeah. Yeah. And is it fair to say that those three days could have bought a few of those chains? Absolutely. <laughs> That's crazy, right? I mean, look, it's 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 you know, it's what we work for. I remember I was at your house recently. L- Lamorne just bought a new home. Gorgeous. You probably already saw it when you see when if we cut to the clip of me dunking on him. Wait, what? <laughs> but oh, when we were there, we were you were not you were talking to me about you're doing is, is is the movie that you're working on is that private? I think there was an announcement, so it's okay to talk about, right? Yeah, I can talk about Bloodshot. Bloodshot, it. Bloodshot, yeah. Yeah, t- mm-hmm. explain what what that is. So Bloodshot is uh it's based on a comic. It's a superhero film based off of the Valiant comic Bloodshot, mm-hmm. uh starring Vin Diesel. Um Family and, Vin Diesel. Family. Right. Uh, Aza Gonzalez and uh, you get Sam Hune. You got uh, you got uh, a lot of good a lot of good actors in this movie, man. And it's myself, it, it's set where you Guy think there's going to be a few of them, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I believe so. You know, it depends on the first one, of course. When the first one comes out in February, I'm going to say February 2020. If it does really well, then yeah, you know, it's written that way. We'll see. Hopefully, we do get to do it. I mean, the cast is great. It's a fun fun project for sure. And I get to I get to be weird. So when we're at your, when I was at your house, you were talk, we were talking about because this was at a time where I was testing for a television show, mm-hmm. and your television show was not yet picked up. Right. Um, uh, woke. Right. Woke for Hulu. Yeah, for Hulu. Yes. When is that going to come out? Uh, that should come out uh, spring as well. And uh, you're gonna. That's awesome. I, you have a, a, a huge studio movie and a new show that you're the lead of. Oh man, that's really fucking cool, isn't it? It is. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's uh, it's pretty fun. I uh, I work my butt off, man. I know you do. I work my butt off. And Rick, I would kindly ask that you wait to put this podcast out uh, until we drop because it's gonna that's that's gonna that's gonna be it well, the truth is i'm not gonna do that I'm i know put this out soon I but i'll have, i'd love to have you back i know yeah i should actually tell you to come in september so you get here in january so we could record it then you'll probably be a little late 100 percent. so the reason i brought that up is because we were talking about we were talking money and mm-hmm. and, and numbers and episode amounts and blah 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 mm-hmm. and you had said something to me about like you were surprised about something and i said lamorne i'm not like where you are and you and you're like yeah i kind of keep forgetting that not about me but just about where you are i think that's a Mm -hmm. kind of a common thing like we are at where we're at and we assume that's a status quo we forgot how many how many times you've leveled up right you know and i'm curious if now that you have you know that you're the lead of a show and you have this movie coming out and you have thirty thousand dollar chains and also (laughs) the biggest one of all shout out to bmo campaign (laughs) if you if you're starting to feel like you've you're you're set no 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 not at all like it's a it's for certain jobs people sometimes they put they put a number on certain things and i i i actually have a a number in my mind that i won't feel i won't feel like i've made it financially at least until i reach that number that number gross earnings or how much you have in the bank at a certain time um, how much I have in the bank at a certain time. So you're not constantly necessarily growing it. Right. I just want to, I just want to look the moment I look in my account or hold up my statement and it has this particular number on the bottom. Right. At one time, like not accumulative, like accumulative over my lifespan. I've made X amount of dollars. You want to look in the bank and see, I have X dollars and it's like made it right now. If that falls below it, are you like, Nope, that's fine. Once you hit it, you're yeah, because there's no way I can spend that. And oh, no, so it's a real. Uh, it's not just like small eight figures then. No, no, no. This is like it's a hundred mil. No, a lot higher than that. Your number is higher than a hundred mil in the bank. Not which means not not assets. Just you have a hundred mil in the bank. In the bank. Why aren't you investing this money? Uh, well, that's what I mean in assets as well. But like, like if I pooled all of my things together, well, I, I, maybe not real estate. Maybe not real estate. And the reason I say that is because then that takes effort to go and then liquefy that. I mean, something that you could put up on eBay in seven days. Possibly. If I I said, oh, if I put this, let's say I'm $30,000 short of my goal. I could say, well, I do have this chain. (laughs) I do have this. What's that? I just need to see that number at some point. Are you, is, are you, is that a priority? Are you, are you money driven? No, but that's the thing. It's not a priority, which also keeps me motivated acting wise. So I'll know, since I know I have never made it, I'll continue to work harder to do better and better projects. Um, cooler projects, and then every once in a while I'll go after money, and I, I'll never reach this goal that I that I'm looking for unless I hit some sort of investment or if I put my money into the right 
you know, tech company or have a startup that booms or, you know yeah, what I mean? I mean? I don't think you know what you mean. I know exactly what I mean. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> but just like, like, like if the plan was like, I'm looking for a big boom tech thing. It's like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, meaning, meaning I have my, I have, I have a good amount of money in about five, maybe, maybe, maybe four different do you have any money tech in, companies. Do you have any money in crypto? I do. And not going so well. <laughs> hey, do you have significant money in it? Uh, I started by putting 50 grand in. And that has so you have since like, you have about ten. I have about four dollars. <laughs> you put it in after. I remember you and I were talking uh, about it after it kind of blew up. Yeah, and I was like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, I've been in it for a bit. Yeah, there there are these things that I miss based off of the fact that I don't have the education. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know about these things. Right. There are certain I I heard about like Bitcoin. I've heard about cryptocurrency since like two thousand and nine, two thousand ten. I've heard about this, and I never investigated. I just it just sounded like. Yeah. science fiction to me still does yeah but there are people that are walking around with like you know like crazy crazy amounts of money based on this uh -huh. that you, that's unbelievable to me and they're like oh i put a hundred dollars in and then i'm worth a billion dollars like, what the fuck uh -huh. that, that doesn't happen anywhere oh um, i remember in uh, january of 2018 where uh my crypto i was in london and every day i break. made what's that Humble brag, go ahead. I, how do I make it just a regular brag? I flew to London, Air New Zealand. Flight was amazing. It said, <laughs> welcome Rick Glassman on the screen. And for the first week, I averaged making about 40K a day. Shut up. It was crazy how much my shit was going up. Now, I forgot to bring my... In crypto, one of the... When you put your money in a bank, it, you're beholden to them. And, it's, and, 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 and there's a lot of... I mean, I can't say there's too many cons, but in this world of crypto fanatics, like you want everything to be decentralized, blah, 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 blah. But one of the benefits is if you forget your password, you just show them your ID and then they have your money. It's insured. Not, well, not with crypto. With crypto, you got to find your own way of securing it. And the most secure way is cold storage. I didn't bring my stuff to London. Mm. So I couldn't. There was a certain moment where I wanted to sell a lot of it and I couldn't. But I'm buying suits, I'm buying glasses. I'm just shopping, bro. Let me just just rewind for a second. You you were making forty thousand a day on un, what un, you bought. unrealized earns, right? But what Thanks. you were buying were suits and glasses. I'm in London, <laughs> baby. Flew Air New Zealand. The name was on the screen. Ah, glasses. <laughs> I bought so m I bought so many sweaters. <laughs> you know, I live in L.A. I've worn them twice. Um, so. Yeah, just and then and then before I even got home, you know, I was like, "Oh fuck me, man!" So so because you couldn't because you didn't have the key, I couldn't sell it. Damn, yeah. dude, I couldn't sell it. Uh, and I tried to get because I had my, my buddies Brent and John live in this building. Mm -hmm. I tried to get them to come over, but they don't know. I, I, they don't know how to. It's so complicated to plug it in and these passwords and this thing and send it to this. And if you mess up one character in this forty character thing, the money is gone forever. Wait, and, really? Yeah. If you put the wrong password in, if I send, so basically the way you transfer money is 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 almost like a, an email address. Right. And if you send, an, if I send, mean to send you an email, and if I don't put, if I send Lamorn Oris and I forget the M, Lamorn Oris now has the email, and unless he sends it back to me, <laughs> it's Ooh. his. Ooh. So you have to double check everything, and all my friends are idiots. I don't even know what I'm doing. Jeez, I have a broker. I'm scared. Didn't you have an issue with, with, a, with a money manager once? No, no, no. I, I never had an issue with a money manager, but I, you always get those. I've heard stories about people who have, and so I would get paranoid, and then I would go and do like crazy like amounts of research and audits, and you know, I'd be annoying for a while just to make sure all the money's there. You, uh, you started in Chicago improv, right? I don't mm -hmm. want to do too much of an interview thing. I love just talking, mm -hmm. but I do think your story is very, very cool and kind of the story that like, Oh, yeah, that makes sense. He's been on a path for this since the beginning. 100%. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, oh, gosh. That's been in there for a while. Oh, sweet relief. Oh, gosh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my land. Oh. <laughs> Why does that gross him out so much? <laughs> Remember me hand sanitizer? Yeah. Everything's been moved around now. So if you guys uh don't know about Rick, Ricky, Ricky G, he's uh 
very he's OCD. <laughs> That's amazing. Gracias. That's a whole lot. I heard hand sanitizer gives you titties. <sighs> As a man. <laughs> I know. Instant titties. That's where if I had an, uh, an editing budget, I'd have someone like you know give you some tits for the rest of the episode. <laughs> oh boy. So were you were you um how old were you when you did Second City? Uh, Second City, I think it was 18, and, 18 19, and 20. Se- Second City is the the Duke of improv, especially back in the day. Like, yeah. that was the place to go. Tina Fey, Chris Farley, Steve Carell, like... Amy Poehler. They all came out of Second City. And yeah. Second City is in Los Angeles as well, but mm. it's Chicago. Yeah, Chicago's the hub. And what were you doing there? Uh, so, it's interesting. I started... I didn't know really too much about comedy. I just knew I would get kicked out of class a lot. And so a teacher referred me. I would I would tell jokes in class, and they would give me five minutes at the beginning of a class because they knew I would take it. I would take the five minutes. And then if you point. had the five, you you were better. If I well yeah, you got I, your I'd laughs. behave. Yeah, I'd behave the rest of the day. <laughs> what did you mean? Uh, did you do stand up? I legitimately would do stand up. What's do the type of joke minutes. you would do? I would always talk about baseball because I didn't know anything about it. And so my friends, <laughs> our teacher at the time loved baseball and his son played baseball. And so he would start by talking about the homework assignment and I would just get up and I would go, can I just, can I take this opportunity? He would go, of course, Mr. Morris, you got five minutes. And I would go, <laughs> anybody catch that Cubs game last night? <laughs> and then people would go, yeah. And all the, class, the, the classmates, they were all in on it because they knew if we start talking about baseball, the teacher would get distracted and start talking about his son's game. And before you know it, a 45-minute class turns into a 20-minute class. <laughs> wow. And then he would catch on. It took a long time for him to catch on to what I was doing. And then I would get kicked out. Why? He let you do your five minutes. Yeah. Then sometimes he would let me do five minutes and then go, hey, do you want... F-? He would say, do you want five minutes? And I would say, yes. He goes, if you get five minutes, you have to get out afterwards. What does that mean? That means you could talk, but then you got to leave. <laughs> that's, what, that's a double win. Right. So I would always leave. Are you getting in trouble too, or is it just you're out in the hall? No, I have to go to. I would have to go to detention. What did your family think of that? My mom never knew. Okay, so what it wasn't she, a calling parent. What does she think about it now? New house, new car. <laughs> your boy came up, <laughs> my guy. So being kicked out of class has taught me a lot of things, but I'm also dumb on a lot of aspects. <laughs> What do you mean? Uh, no, I just, I just, I just, the school wasn't for me. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so lo, mo, a lot of the things that I was supposed to learn in school, I learned after. Like what? Uh, just basic business stuff, history stuff. History? Uh, well, you learned some history after? Afterwards. What I'm, kind of history uh, did you learn in, as an adult? As an adult, I learned about, uh, let's see. So going to a school in Illinois, for example, if you went to a black school, which like, you did? I did starting out, but there are things, there, there was a certain curriculum we were not on at that age. So by the time I was ninth grade moving to the Burbs, normally they'd be teaching about, you know, slavery and, and different things, part of the slave trade and um, different periods in America in which black people were a certain, had a, held a certain position mm. in society that I never knew. So you moved to the suburbs right around when you would have learned about black culture right. and history, right. and you didn't anymore because your mom had to come up or something. Well, we just had to move. The neighborhood was violent. Right. You know, my mom got a different. My mom had the same job, but she just moved closer to her job, which would get us out of that particular neighborhood. Us? Uh, so it's just you and your brother, right? Me, and my brother. Um, but it was, it was four of us. So, but the, my sister and my older brother had been moved uh-huh. had moved out by then, um, and so we that we moved to the burbs, uh, and then you don't learn about those things. You know what I mean? You don't learn about the fact that for a while in this country, black people were the go-to for financial services. You know, Black Wall Street is you know what they would call it. And then the Ku Klux Klan and the United States government didn't like that very much. Then they wipe out entire communities. Lynchings, burnings, you know what I mean? Like murders. And we, we just thought, you know, post-slavery, we were just screwed. Like, that was it. We've been recovering. You know, we've recovered multiple times. It's just people didn't like that so much you know what, what did I mean? that how did that change your perspective did that change did that change your perspective on on black people absolutely absolutely you know what i mean Girl, you 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 you're not taught about your your roots or your, your culture or your history and how right how great your people are you're not taught about yeah. that because if you watch american television sometimes it, you know, we're getting a lot better when I mean, you watch movies all the heroes are white mm-hmm. all the you know the the women on the magazines are all white women and you know it was like well what happened, how come people don't look like me out here Did you, were you conscious of that at the time no at the time when you're a kid you're just like that's what it looks like did you right? have white role models 
Uh, in real life, like real role models around me. Just, mm. and just is there anybody you look up to, whether it's real life or or, or a celebrity, a singer, or an artist? Um, at the time when I was young, no. And you, because you didn't identify with them, you think? Right. And that's probably why my heroes were, you know, all black at the time. Who? Uh, Michael Jordan. Was Michael one, Jordan right? was numero yeah. uno. Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Mm-hmm. When I was growing up, um, people at church, there were guys at church that I that I that I admired. Yeah. All, but did you know that you were only looking up to people that were similar to you? Or is that just... No, like, it was just something that... Yeah, because I never thought about that either. Yeah, it was just something that I was a- around. I was like, oh, the, the, these people are great. When you watch T... Because I watch basketball. I wasn't looking up to Craig Elo. That's for damn sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, he I was. T- yeah, I know you were. <laughs> well, you know, I'm from Cleveland. But also, I didn't really watch basketball then. I'm sorry, go on. No, but the, I'm just saying, like, if you look at the Bulls at the time, there were like a few, like, like John Paxton. I really like John Paxton. So he was somebody who I kind of looked up to um, just because he made that three-pointer. Uh, 93 championship so so in ninth grade that's when you started having white friends yes do you think that got you into comedy because second city feels like white people right and that's why i got to second city so i started i started performing in college i started doing plays but my characters were always goofy and funny at some for some reason it was like oh he's i play those characters and I didn't know what I was going to do. I wanted to be a sports journalist or, or if I was going to go into some sort of broadcasting. What age is Second City for you? Uh, Second City, I think I was probably 18. So you just graduated high school? Yes, when I when I started Second City, um, a year after. So I, I graduated That's high school. That's your first year of college. Right. You know, and I was going to school. I was, going to, I was, I was taking classes at, at college, also going to Second City. And what were you? And that's what you're talking about. You weren't sure what you were going to do. What right. college? Uh, college of DuPage. Okay. It's like this. Uh, it's a, like a community college in like in the burbs of Chicago. It's pretty big. It's a, it's like the I think it's the biggest community college in the country. Um, and they have a great theater program. Shout out to College of DuPage, College of Dreams, COD. Uh, and it, it, you know, what plays it, did you do? Uh, let's see, uh, History of the Devil. I did uh, Godspell twice. I, I did um, Importance of Being Earnest. Um, I did. Uh, Were you leads? Were you like one of the guys? Yeah, True Confessions of the Wolf. I was the lead. I was the lead. I was a lead in all of them. The lead in want to say one, maybe one play. Did one you or feel two. you were good? Yeah, I felt like I felt that was good. You know, I there were there were people in my classes or in my, in the plays that I would perform in that were amazing. This guy Mike Fadigato, till this day, is the best actor I've ever seen. And, and is and he it, still working? Uh, well, he stopped. He stopped acting for a long time. Stay with the family business, um, but now he's getting back into it. And all you white guys out there. You got a problem on your hands, because this Italian dude is the man. Nice, he's really good. Got to check out some of his stuff. Mike Fadigato. We'll put up his Instagram here, maybe. And we're back. Those were the works of Mike Fadigato. Unbelievable talent. And so I would compare myself to him, and him and I, we studied together, trained together. We had two different characters. He was he's so dramatic and so serious, and I was so goofy. Mm-hmm. So always there's a there's a straight person and a funny person to play. It was always us two. You were goofy before you went to the Burbs. You were goofy doing the was baseball always, stuff. Yeah, I was always goofy. Yeah. Baseball stuff was in the original school, right? Um, no, no, that was once I moved to the Burbs. So before you moved to the Burbs, were you goofy? I think I was. I just don't remember. Yeah, because you I, were I, younger. Yeah, I was younger, and that's when I was solely focused on basketball. Like I, when I played basketball, like fifth through eighth grade, that's all I thought about. Because I also even back then wasn't that good like i was like i, I love playing basketball but like yeah, we never the, change the kid hey hey now Hi. hey now i got better as years went on i'm mm-hmm. telling you rick thousand dollars you don't want this smoke you don't you know that i wouldn't take your money and you know that i don't have that money so that's a but crazy you owe me a thousand dollars in push-ups you owe me a thousand push-ups i have arthritis i'd have to give you something else thousand fucking push-ups rick or a thousand dollars. All right. How about this? No money. You just have to dedicate an entire episode of this without me being here, with another guest. But you have to dedicate that entire episode to me. Yeah. Okay. And then if I beat you, if you don't score four points or uh, more, then you give me a thousand bucks. Then I'll give you a thousand bucks. Okay. Or get me a sponsorship with the jewelry people. I just gave you the sponsorship already. No, you didn't. You gave me a, oh, where am I in jewelry? Sorry, I didn't sing so good. I'm sick. <laughs> yeah, but I crushed it, though. But you were good. Not a dry in the house. 
Well, you can't talk that way. I'm oh, sorry about that. Erase that because I don't want to lose any of my sponsorships. Okay. So Thanks, Rick, in advance for deleting that because I don't want to lose any of my sponsorships, friend. I don't think I'm going to. If you're serious, let me know. I, I am to. serious, pal. I'm not going to. If I said it. What sponsorships I, do you have? Dude, come on now. We just talked about this. <laughs> BMO, doc. Oh, right, right. Buick, bruh. Do I really have to delete something? Yeah, when I said that thing about moist f***ness. For real? What yeah. if I just bleep it? So not way they could hear this and they don't know what it was. And I'll bleep out when you just said that too. Yeah, so bleep out when I said not a driver in the house. Okay, so if anybody is editing this other than me, there's three bleeps. So there's a first time and there's the second two validating it. Yeah. And a fourth time probably because he's going to do it again. I know your patterns. <laughs> okay, bleep it. <laughs> Okay, so in uh, you're in 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 black world and you're just fucking butt ball. Mm. You go to white world and you're like the Cubs are great. <laughs> and then you go to Second City and now you're a millionaire, dude. So what happened was Second City they didn't have a lot of black people at Second City, right? At all. So a lady came to watch a comedy show that I had done in the small group. You know Chris Watoski. Chris Watoski is a really funny guy. He he kind of got me started in comedy, um, and so I started doing a comedy group with him. Uh, and, and some other like dope ass folks, Sarah Keek, a lot of funny people. Anyone that you have worked with since, like once you're moving out here? Um, I want to say probably just uh, like at that co- at that particular comedy group. No, but Chris and but Chris has been very instrumental in my career. Um, Do I know Chris? You you I'm I'm pretty sure you know Chris Witoski. Um If you saw him, you know, um, look about yeah. But he he. So what he did was. Uh, uh, a lady came to watch us perform. W I T, A S K E. One of the funniest people I've so ever not performed up. with. Your internet sucks. No, it's just it, that wasn't his Instagram handle. Oh, your Instagram is called, called Google. What are we doing? Google brings up every bit of information. You dumb dumb. Don't don't. Yeah, yeah, like dumb, he dumb. said dry <laughs> no. or a wet one or something. I didn't say That's that. I didn't say That's that. What I said. I, Bleep well, with what I, I just I said. Bleep that. what I said. <laughs> This is going to take three weeks to edit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I recognize him. No. Anyway, he, he, we do this comedy group. This woman comes to see me and she goes, hey, Second City, uh, we're starting a diversity program because there are no black people coming to watch our shows. And why do you think, that, why do you think there's no black people doing it? Just that the culture didn't, they didn't want to do it? Culture was different. The culture was different. Improv wasn't, uh, improv was like, uh, it was more of an alternative form of comedy. When black people, we did comedy. Sometimes we would do sketch groups, I want to say, but I, I didn't know of any at the time. But but we would also do stand-up. Stand-up was a thing. You yeah. know what I mean? Stand-up was something that we... Which you never really did. No, not at all. Um, but in, admire it. You know, it's one, it's like the hardest form of performing, I think. Um, that's why, like, really good stand-ups um, usually, like, do TV shows with their names in it. And mm-hmm. like they don't play characters. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Lil Rel is Lil Rel. Yeah. Martin, Ray mm-hmm. Romano, Seinfeld. Yeah. They, they always put their name in it. And Carmichael. Yeah. The, Home Improvement. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Tim? Yeah. That's um, Tim the uh, Two Man Taylor. Uh, Tim uh, 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 Steve Harvey Show. Yeah. Sid, Sergeant the Entertainment. That's crazy. Yeah. They are, they, yeah, they are all our. Um, I got robbed, bro. Why? I should have been a little more on there, girl. Everywhere I go, people are calling me Winston. It's like, ugh, if I was Lamorne, I'd be like, you know, iconic by now. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I'd be iconic. So there's a diversity program to to get more black people in the audience, or in to get audience. more black uh, performers to then bring in. Well, to get more black to get more black performers to bring in as well. So I'm picturing this, and correct me if I'm wrong. What Sister Mary Clarence did to the community in Sister Act Two mm-hmm. by instead by kind of jazzing up the choir, right. and then the black people or the hip people mm-hmm. around town, like we got to go to fucking church, right? Right, one hundred percent. Okay, we'll That's- cut to a clip of Sister Act Two now. And we're back. That was Sister Act Two, uh, American Boogaloo. What is <laughs> back that? in the habit. Back in the habit. <laughs> uh uh, yeah we have fun but the part that i'm that 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 was interesting about it was that i went there and they said hey do you want to take classes here and i just what do you mean you went you went there for what i went to second city to perform i thought but they said you gotta take classes first don't you everyone has to do that i thought i was special 
at this particular time because they were it was like a diversity program and it was like we're bringing you in essentially to perform here mm -hmm. but because we don't want people being pissed off that you just showed up and got on a, a stage you got to take classes which i definitely needed to mm -hmm. um taking classes made me actually understand the art form behind improv and you know i had some great people that i that i you know ha have seen since then that were in my class there's really funny people thomas middleditch we took class together he's he's one of the funniest improvisers i've ever seen like it it's unbelievable in class i was confused why he was in class mm. I was like, oh, this guy's on another level. Like, I it's don't another know level. I, I mean, we're friends with the best, funniest people in the world. And he's, it's, it's insane what he does. Absolutely. Uh, Steven Yoon from Walking Dead. Like, you know, in class he was so funny. Mm. And, and now he's super dramatic. I'm like, these, it was just so awesome. You know what I mean? That, um, Anybody see, that could do funny acting, isn't just funny, but could, could do scenes in a character funny, they could... They're, they're good actors right oh 100 percent. yeah and uh and these are really good dudes and uh and that's kind of who i was around in class and which definitely helped me Did this feel like a community to you like these are your people a little bit yeah a little bit um and then i started doing a, a, a group called brown co so brown co was like a touring company kind of like so the second city had these different companies that would tour red co green co whatever blue co Brown Co. was their dark initiative. Danny Pudi was in was in Brown Co. And um, myself, we would always do these different uh, shows or showcases. Dark initiative. Yeah, it was a dark initiative. It was to, it was to show our voice and what we like to laugh at, what we think is funny. You don't mean dark comedy. You mean skin color. Skin color. Right. Okay. Yeah. You know, it, but but not just skin color. Just just minority comedy. Yeah. Meaning, yeah. you know. Uh, gay comedy, black comedy, brown comedy, so it's underrepresented comedy. voices 100%. together in one thing. So it would yeah. just be concentrated over here, and all the other ones <laughs> would still be right. And try to, but try to expand. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you have to start somewhere. And I think that that's what that's what Deanna Griffin, you know, uh, started there at Second City, and it's, it's, it's fucking awesome. That's that's how I got my career. And where'd you tour? Um, I mean, a few places here and there. Not crazy, like been to dc a couple times i've been to like you would travel actually you would travel a lot of in state because they're companies that are placed everywhere so what ha what happens is uh, there's a there's a, a work conference somewhere and then you would have to go and perform at this like work a corporate conference. gig corporate gig. are you getting paid yeah you're getting paid so pretty you're good any, you made money real money pretty good not not like I mean, well, no. what would you get for a show uh i forget i think it was like a thousand bucks something like that which you know? you're you're 20 years old yeah it was great because i was yeah. waiting tables and i was getting yeah. 30 dollars a shift plus you're doing what you want to do right like you do that for free absolutely right absolutely because i was doing it for free for so a while. you've done a ton of commercials and um mm -hmm. do you have any you could send me absolutely and we'll cut let them know we'll cut to a clip so this is a clip of one of my commercials that i did this reminds me of your pool sir yeah, if I only had one statue. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back from the commercial. So you were doing that while you were in Chicago before L.A., right? But, yes, Chicago, New York. So you're LA. making money as an actor, mm -hmm. performing on the road, doing little bullshit commercials, mm -hmm. and you decide, All right, I want it's time for the big leagues. Yeah, so BET had an audition. Um just just to have new hosts. I didn't know I didn't know what a TV host was, yeah. to be honest with you. I just it's like it's TV, right? Isn't this a start, a step in the right direction? And I go on an audition. I book it. What was the audition? Um, it was it was something called New Faces Search. So what they were they were looking for new TV hosts. So you get in this room and there's like a script you have to read to the camera as if you're a VJ. Where you're like coming in at number ten, we've got Mary J. Blige. And when I read it, I was I thought it was so ridiculous that people are studying. And I'm used to auditioning at this point, so I know how to handle myself in a room. People are like coming up to me like, hey, man, how's this sound? Hey, yo, now at number nine. And I look at him and I would go, that sounds great. Man. Like, that sounds, that sounds really cool. Like, I'm throwing people off in their auditions. Like, if, if someone's really good, I would go, I don't know if I'd do that. You know, and people are coming up to me and asking me this because they may have seen me in a commercial or something. So you're the guy in Chicago. Right. And so <laughs> it was so messed up about the entire thing is that I just said, well, I can't take myself seriously reading this. So I'm just going to make fun of everything that I do. So... I was like, I was doing like just really stupid jokes based off of who was on the countdown. So if it was like Mike, Mike Jones, Mike Jones, mm -hmm. who Mike mm -hmm. Jones, I that's literally what I. And then the like, voice always got real deep, right? 
Kind of. I, I don't remember that part, but I just remember something. I'm Mike Jones. Yeah, chopped and screwed. Mark. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's 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 his. That's all his music, and so. I was like coming in uh, like number five is Mike Jones and, and every time people did it you could hear them every time they would do it they would go who Mike Jones who they would all do it and I, would, I just did a bit where I just went coming in at number five is Mike Jones I fucking know you guys want me to say the stupid thing about saying who 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 I'm going to say the dumbest dumb dumb so stupid coming in at number four like and I would do stuff like that yeah. Like Mary J. Blige, I make fun of her crying all the time in her music. And, and then all of a sudden you hear silence. And then you just hear, because you can't see who's behind the camera. And then you just like maybe five seconds of silence in a year. <laughs> and it's Reginald Hudlin. And Reggie Hudlin at the time. The was Reginald Hudlin? The Reginald Hudlin. And he's running BET at the time. And he was the person that I happened to read with. If I read with anybody else, right. there's no way I'd be called back. Because he's, he's a second city guy. Right. So he understood the weird humor mm -hmm. as opposed to the obvious humor. And then that's kind of how I got in there. I had to go do a whole competition in New York, interviewing people and not being dumb. And I was so bad. Do you have any of that? That's, that's probably out there on YouTube somewhere. I haven't looked at it in a while. I'm not sure if we'll find it, but just in case. I just finished shaving with New Edge Active Care Shaving Cream. And I really recommend it. And we're back. I'm starting to get the hang of this. Yeah, you're not bad at all, man. I should, yeah. So you get the gig and you have to move. That would be New York, though, right? Had to move LA. to New York. Yeah, I had to move to New York. Um, hated it. I'll be honest with you. I'm not one of those people that's a fan of New York. I'm not. Uh, it's so busy. So chaotic. I love the people. Actually, some of my closer friends live in New York. Love the people in New York. Beautiful energy. It's just how crazy and chaotic it is. Mm -hmm. Running around so much gives me a headache. I'm not a fast-paced person at all. I know. very slow mm -hmm. um mentally as well mm -hmm. like I, I i have to think if you said lamore you're going uptown i would go okay <laughs> <laughs> let's think about this for a second is it that way <laughs> is it that way and, and nine times out of ten i would get lost um 90 percent of the time 90 90 percent of the time jesus i found myself circling the same street <laughs> like nah we try that way now um even what is this new york behind you of course looking at this this just triangular building on the corner flat iron building yeah whatever you would call it oh <laughs> it's 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 like giving me anxiety do you want me to take it down i just know that i'd be walking down that street and i'd go oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's me. You'd see me on that corner. It's stuck. <laughs> like, so how old are you? You're 22. You moved to LA? Uh, I was 22 when I moved to New York. I was 21 when I moved to New York. And you're there and for a year? There, I was there for a few years. And then I, I moved to LA when I was 25. And your first, what was your first real gig? New Girl? Aside from the commercials and the BET stuff, um, like the hosting stuff. Like the kind of money that like... Oh, like yeah. change your life money is is new girl commercials i actually made more money during commercial doing commercials for a year than because you did so many or some of them paid for, uh, for a certain amount some of them paid for, like a really good amount of money what's the most you made for a commercial for one uh, single before before new girl before new girl before bmo yeah um one singular commercial i want to say probably made me about 175 because it ran dollars. for a long time yeah it was big what was the commercial? commercial um i think this may have been it may have been uh, this LG Iron Man commercial. I won't say it was either that or a Microsoft commercial that I did. And the way that works is you don't know anything, but just you know, one day you open your mail and there's you know there's four grand, there's two grand, right? There's nineteen grand, some like yeah. just ra random checks. Oh yeah, you would get these bulky yeah. like, packet of checks in. Like. Plus, you have other commercials running at the time, right? So you're paying your bills from commercials. Yes, absolutely. And you're auditioning a lot. A, t a ton you know it was to the point where i was getting offers for commercials nice you know i was only doing commercials but i'd be the reference in the commercial in, yeah, the, in, yeah, the, yeah. in the casting call so you'd see a lamorne morris type <laughs> yeah. or something of a picture of you right and 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 shockingly one time it happened and i didn't book it mm -hmm. and i was so pissed off do you have any funny audition stories because I, I it's, it's such an odd world you drive an hour and a half sometimes to wait for two hours to go in with no lines right. and just do faces. Exactly. Like, how uh, would you describe your experience? My experiences were a lot like that. A couple of experiences off the top of my head. There was one time when I didn't have a car, my car got repoed, and I had to go from North Hollywood to Santa Monica. So you would take a train 
mm. to Hollywood, then get off that train, get on the bus to Santa Monica, and that would stop at every street going from the east side Hollywood. That's all a two and a half hour trip. Legitimately, yeah. two and a half, and on the way back even longer uh -huh. because it's, by the time you come back, it's like rush hour. Um, There's one time I get all the way there, I go in the room, and the audition maybe lasted three minutes. Mm -hmm. I leave. I go get something to eat. I get a sandwich. I get back on the train with the bus and the train. I get off the train at the train station. As I'm walking to my apartment, I get a, 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 a email, a phone call from my agent saying, "Hey, check your email." I checked the email. They said, "Hey, they want you to uh, you, 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 you got a call back." And I was like, "Oh, great, got a call back. When is it?" Like, now, dude. I'm like, "What do you, what do you mean now?" <laughs> I just got off the goddamn. Uh -huh. It just took me three hours to get home. You went back right away. I went back right away. Did you get it? I booked it. Yeah. What was that one? I think that was Domino's. Domino's <laughs> Pizza. <laughs> Domino's Pizza probably made me like fifteen grand or something. That's what I'm talking about. Like mm. how far, yeah. You know, you have come, and like booking a commercial. I, I still I remember the first few commercials I booked, and mm. even now, book anything. It's always mm. exciting to book something. It's always oh, yeah. a lottery ticket, you know. Oh, yeah. But just like, it's it's mental. Oh, it's, absolutely. It's mental. Absolutely. Um, and it, now, now you're do you know, you got your own shit. Yeah. And it's, but, but the funny thing is, the way the reason commercials took off was because uh, it was because I decided because I was late for an audition. Why uh -huh. are you sucking the the mic like it's a dick? Oh, I see how that could look that way. I have TMJ disorder. I was adjusting my jaw while also nodding. Yes, I understand what you're saying. I think so. It looked like I was sucking. You really have TMJ disorder? Yeah. Too many jobs. No, temporal mandible jaw. It's um, I'm Jewish. Oh, okay, makes a lot of sense. And if you didn't know, <laughs> oh, <Oy vey. laughs> yeah, funny. So you were late for an audition, and you realized I don't care. No, no, it, kind of. Uh, yeah. No, no. I, I was there. Was you know, you walk into the room, and there's the sides, the the, the script. It's like big letters. Yeah. Like it's almost like a teleprompter, but it's written down. And peop, some people are trying to memorize it. Right. And I and and but they had emailed me the, the sides, and I could I had time to you Three know three hours. Yeah. And I, so I had a ton of time to get off book, um, but I didn't. And the the as I'm running, I'm running late, running late. The casting director was waiting for me, and she's like super pissed off. I forget I forget which one it was, but she was super pissed off. And she goes, have you read the sides? And I said, yeah, absolutely. yeah, Because yeah. <laughs> I don't want to take any more time to mm -hmm. look at them. So I glanced at them. And then I glanced at the, the board in the room yeah. and got so thrown off once we started the audition that I just had to make stuff up. I started improvising a lot. And the client is on, they're on Skype watching in and they're dying laughing. Yeah. And then I booked it on the spot. That's another example where if the clients weren't in there, if it was just casting director, yeah. that may have not happened. Not at all. Because they would have been like, what is this? You're embarrassing me. Yeah, yeah that, there's a certain... When that works, yeah. your, uh, my guess is your, you know, when, when there's an opportunity to, to play with stuff, that's where you shine the most. Is, right. that, is that fair to say? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, if somebody doesn't want that, that's just not the job you're going to get. Right. You know, I mean, I, I can, obviously, right. and I have, and I've booked those things before playing, you know, playing no comedy, playing just the straight man. But your wheel, you're 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 locked in when you get to do it your way, right? That's how it was on New Girl. Yeah, New Girl first season, I was kind of just trying to fit the mold of whatever character they were trying to develop, and they had no explain, idea. Explain, explain though what that means because you weren't in the pilot, so no. you you came in. Usually, usually a script is written for a character, and then when someone's cast, they 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 shape it a little bit to the actor or act, you know their right. their strengths weaknesses. But you, but your character's already set, so not only do they not know you, you're coming in episode two, right? And they didn't know what to do. Not at all. They changed the character's name. They didn't know his occupation. That's why my character has had more jobs than a Jamaican. Like I've had like sixteen jobs. Jamaicans have a lot of jobs, man. Yeah, sixteen job. Ah, oh, Jimmy, I can have a sixteen job. Okay. I don't want to. They, they got a lot of jobs, but I, I feel like they have just as many jobs as anyone else. <laughs> no, they work harder than anybody did. They're hard workers. Okay, they're capable of doing multiple things. I, yeah, I think there's no one more capable than a Jamaican. It's, actually, I'll be putting that up. I have a shirt. There's no one more capable than Jamaican. We'll put it up here. Well, Belizeans, I think, are more capable. The shirt is already. Bel made. Belizeans are the greatest people on earth. I'm not going to make a shirt of that one. We are the master race, Rick. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. You're the man. You're the man. So uh, so the first season, they don't know what they're doing with you, or at least you feel this way, which is self-fulfilling. Yeah, I mean, but they, they knew it, too. They've admitted to this. Okay. They admitted to me 
this fact. It's like they we're trying to develop the writers, the writers, the producers. Like, yeah. hey, we're trying to figure it out. So bear with us. And the episodes were funny, but my character were my character just wasn't as developed as the rest of the characters. Right. And so finally, and everyone on that show from the beginning was shining. Yeah. I mean, that's just that was that show was just monster from yeah. episode season one. Right. And yeah. so, but it took my character a season to yeah. figure it out. So by the time we got, and just me being comfortable being on TV, you know what I mean? Like I didn't know. Right. How I should be or how I should perform. I didn't know I could be as comfortable as I as I could. How, as I how did been. you learn? Did you watch yourself? Was it? The I watched experience? myself. I wa- and I watched Jake Johnson a ton. He's fantastic. Huh? Jake Johnson is is great, and he and he, I watched his his lack of caring. You watched him on set, like in scenes. In scenes, we would do bits. Like I would say something, and I would watch how off script he was, and that would be that would be my my blueprint. You know, I just, oh, what, what could you tell me that you learned from watching him? You improvise as much as you can. In, in, in television, it's okay. I, I, I'm not sure with multicam. I don't think so. Um, there's certain blocking cues and different. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they're very anal about the script. I want to say, um, single cam. You can kind of, you know, if the writers give you that freedom, right? Because they know, could always not use it, right? You know what I mean? They give you different takes, alts different lines different jokes you can have come you up learned with. that that it's that if you want the um, the thing you improvise to make it in that to, tighter is better so do you start Absolutely. trying to do sound bites instead of scenes right um not me though me i'm notorious for just doing unusable shit like everybody knows it and like, was it unusable did, did they ever use a lot t- of times it's unusable but some of my funniest <laughs> stuff was like some of my funnier jokes were like stuff that i would just make up on the spot and it would make it in and it would be like like quotes like people would use online for year, a decade later people are still saying like what's one of the more popular things you've improvised so i improvised this joke this is my well yeah there was, so jake johnson was talking about his character was talking about getting a a, a new phone mm-hmm. and i said there's no way you can get a new phone you have the the credit score of a homeless ghost and so people loved it and it killed until yeah. this day it's one of the funnier now, jokes you know, people laughing on set when you say it do you yeah. know you know it's a hit yeah, yeah, people like people laughed on set, right. and that was, and then it was like Liz goes, "Hey, can you say that joke again on when we turn around, just so we can make sure right. we get his reaction to it?" So I was like, "Oh, it might be a joke today." Feels they good, use. right? It when, felt great. when you feel like yeah. they want me to do this thing, yeah. Or the or the black what was it Black Friday joke? I think I, I didn't improvise that one, which people now use and people now say and what? like where they go, "Oh, we're going out for Black Friday," and I go, "Or as or as I call it, Friday." Yeah, and that was a joke that people really liked, and they use it, and it's on T-shirts. I've seen people do it in other shows where I'm like, eh, "You got that joke from me, <laughs> jazz out of here, right?" So, so you're a new girl, and now you're now you're um, now you feel funny. Yeah, I met, I met you right when that happened. I think right. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. We met yeah. at a at a buddy's house. Yeah, Shane and, West. And I started watching a New Girl uh, like a few weeks before, so I was just caught up to everything. But I watched mm-hmm. it all then. And the episode it was a wedding episode. You were in the duct. Oh yeah, 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 it was, yeah. But I remember watching it and just like, what the f- like, what the f- <laughs> like? The, everything was fire. Yeah. And then I remember, and then I saw you. I'm like, whoa! I'm a, you know. Yeah. I remember I came up to you on the steps by the pool. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think we were with Brent or somebody that you already knew. And I introduced myself that uh, I was just a really big fan. Yeah, I forget who the, the mutual friend was. I'm I think sure it was Brent. Maybe I don't think I knew Brent. Yeah, well, maybe then you guys were talking already, yeah. and I didn't know, and then I walked up, and I saw, ooh, there's that guy from The Vent. <laughs> That's The Vent Boy. And then I, the way I recall is we hit it off right away and have been mm. friends since. Yes. And then sometimes uh, you say, I'm mean. Yeah, yeah, because you can be. You this, can, you you can ha- hurt a heart. You have this play mentality mm-hmm. that, that, that turns me on. I mean that literally. I mean literally like, yep. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to do this thing that you're doing. And I think we both have this competitive thing in us that makes sense when you're playing basketball, maybe, because that's tangible. That's, oh, he's pushing me because he's trying to score a basket. Like it or not, I understand the intention. Right. But when we're out at Dupar's doing jokes with, you know, a girl that you're dating and another girl that, that I don't really know and you don't, you know, and, and now and now it's like I'm posting you up and you're just like, I'm just trying to eat, man. <laughs> and, and I don't even realize what's happening until you say something to me and now I'm sweating. <laughs> and we've had a few of those moments. We have. We yeah. have. Well, it's the, I think that's the, like you said, it's the competitive nature, mm-hmm. but it's also the, the need to play. So if I'm, like, let's say I'm not in the mood to play yeah. and you're playing and you hit me with something that's so 
disrespectful. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta start playing now. And I'm like, <laughs> but it doesn't seem like you're playing. It seems like you're. Uh, that's why I get hot. It doesn't seem like you're like, oh, okay, I'll play back. It seems like, uh, no, Rick, and here's why. And then I go, oh, I was playing with you. Yeah, but you sometimes the way you play can be emasculating in front of other women. You'll try it, and then I'll go, oh, yeah. I'll go, damn, Rick, why you got to go there in front of these women? All right, if this is where we're going, then allow me to shut it down now, if possible, with with something that doesn't suit like I'm playing. Probably play it too. Yeah, no, there's nothing malicious behind it. I don't feel anything's malicious, but I, yeah. I I I have with you more than my other peers, and I take responsibility for mm-hmm. it. It's like, oh, Lamorne didn't want this, and uh, <laughs> he told me without telling me. Rick's the type of person that will, to your girlfriend, go. I know his dick's not as big as mine. So if you're looking like you would say stuff like that, that go, listen, I, I'm feeling I'm feeling defensive right now because we opened up with so much dick talk, and yeah. I I don't remember ever saying something like that. But I know what you're saying, yeah, yeah. Just like kind of just beat beat beating you down a little bit. Yeah, and I would go, all right, man. If if but if we're not going to eat a sandwich and if we're going to beat each other down, then let me let me put my gloves on. It usually it usually it, it's usually a response to something though. Like, if you probably would have said, yeah, well, Rick, you know, Rick missed a three the other day. And then I go, fuck you. You know, like, I, I, get, I take it a little too far. But when somebody gives me a little jab, I feel it's game on. But who cares? I've talked about this in other podcasts, and I'm bored talking about it now. You can be. You have the rights. You're druthers. Be bored, man. Yeah. I just want to make a good product. And I've talked about this before, but hosting a podcast, I have mm-hmm. a responsibility more than just coming on and being funny or talking about something I, it's like i gotta say rick this is probably your most informative podcast do you, you actually that, talk about substance like 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 other things of substance being addressed on your podcast could you ask that differently you're saying this is the most informative meaning what that you've done with me? i feel like i've talked about like real stuff with you and is that is that good or is that that's good i don't know what i don't know what you're going for you are you are funny so but therefore for about 30 minutes there we weren't telling any jokes we were just giving straight up exposition you know i've been i've been i've gone back and forth with that where it's like my instincts for this when i was originally doing it is because i have i have the funniest friends in the world Mm -hmm. all i do is laugh Mm -hmm. and now these funny friends that i say are literally like everybody knows them as the funniest people in the world what if i I want to capture some of these moments. So I thought, let me set up some cameras and do it. And I wanted to cut it down to like just fire bits. You know what I mean? Like right. not treat it as a conversation, but just comedians and cars getting coffee basically. Mm-hmm. But just comedians in my living room eat, drinking coffees over the tray. Right. The and, knows it. But that's not what a podcast is. People like listening to stuff for a while. So I hear, let me know if this, if you need stuff to be funnier. And, I, I, and then I'll just stop doing the podcast because I can't be funny for an hour and a half. Yes, you can. Rick. Yes, you can. I've seen it. Um, but also when people come on that I'm fans of, and one of the cool things of this podcast is I've had people come on that some of them, I literally like the role models of mine. Mm. And, and I, as I said, I met you as a, I was a fan of yours. Sometimes I want to hear that thing. And I don't know if other people do. I don't know if they Mm. only want to hear it with jokes. I don't know. I mean, this podcast is fucking blowing up though. People are losing their minds. That's not true, but I did go to London recently and the woman at Whole Foods who checked me out told me she liked the podcast. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey, my guy. So shout out to uh, her. (laughs) (laughs) You didn't even get her name? Yeah, but I'm going to remember. That one international fan you got. Do me a favor. If you see this, you know who you are because you know Whole Foods uh, in Kensington. If you see this, leave a comment. I'd love to shout you out next time. Slide in the DMs. You check your, you, I know you check your DMs. Uh, usually. I miss a lot of stuff. I miss texts. You know, you I'm not it. seeing everything. Yeah, me either. How many texts you got missing? Oh, I on. mean, right now I have on. unread 188. Jeez, Rick. Some of those are group texts, though. They just go a little hot, you know? Oh, my gosh. Uh, um, That's a lot, dude. I have 780. I have a girlfriend now. Really? Yeah. Who? The girl you met when, when you left here. Little, little British joy. Yeah, I met her in London when I went. She I mean, she came, she living, she found, she lived out, she lived here. You tell me you're importing these hoes. She, she's back and forth for work. Hey, what she do? She works in product development, if you know what I mean. No. She like, product, like uh, works with 
wellness brands, uh, CBD brands, and uh, beauty products, and works with the chemists to develop s- mm. certain products, and then also works in the the marketing of it and the branding of it. She's been helping me out on this podcast, where uh, I don't know if it'll be up by the time this is, but I'm working on getting a new uh, new logo. And- so what would you go do? What? What's that? What you gonna do, Ricky Rick? What is that? What are you What are you licking? It's peppermint oil. Oh yeah, lick that and let me give you a little bit of this. Okay. Is that for your sickness? No, it's just for like breath. Okay. Never oh, it's nice. Peppermint oil. There you go. There you go. Yes, I, it more comes out than I meant to, but you know, yeah, you'll, you'll rub it in. This is ridiculous. Um, you're single though. Yeah. Shout out to the single life. Uh, I'm enjoying it. Um, I know. Uh, but I'm, you know, not enjoying it in the way you would think. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the relaxed time and not having to stress about, you know, things that re- a relationship entails. Mm-hmm. I do. I would like to get back into a relationship. At do you some think point. that being in a relationship is inherently stressful, or the ones that you have been in through circumstance ended up being stressful? I think they all are. But either, no matter, even the healthiest, you think the, that even the gonna, healthiest yeah. ones are a bit stressful. Um, but I don't think it's it like, I don't think it's like pain inducing stressful like if you're in a great relationship there are things that you have to compromise and sometimes compromise can be stressful yeah um so it's not it's not everything is stressful at some point um, but it's not a bad thing being on vacation too long can be stressful you just have to make do with what you have so in a relationship there have been some that i've been in that have been just toxic and completely stressful. Mm-hmm. You know, my last my, my last relationship that I was in, which is probably the longer relationship I've been in, was great. We just had some, we had little issues here and there. I did like her a lot. Yeah, she was awesome. She was awesome. Um, but you know, she, you know, she, she, she's got a new man now. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> she likes relationships. She likes those things. Me myself wasn't a fan necessarily of relationship quarrels and disagreements and uh i'm I'm trying to be as uh political as you can yeah she was great (laughs) she was she was she was she was great you guys i'm I'm sure she still is great too yeah i don't we don't communicate though well, I'm sure she's going to check this out. So leave some comments. And if you know the girl from Whole Foods, tag her. Yeah, tag her. Um, you know, you bring up an interesting point that you, the disagreements you don't like. I had a conversation with my new, it's so weird to say girlfriend. I haven't had a girlfriend in years. <laughs> about how I, I felt, I th- and I, I don't want to speak for her, but what I took from what she said was disagreements and arguments are almost synonymous. Mm-hmm. Where I find disagreements they don't raise my cortisol at all. In fact, sometimes mm-hmm. I like having a debate about things. Right. And disagreements, to fear them, then become self-fulfilling. And right. it's like there's no problem with this. Like, I, help me learn and gain perspective. Right. Um, so no, yeah, disagreements. I mean, yeah, disagreements are fine. You know what I mean? Healthy debates are fine. It's, it's when both parties really want to be right. Mm. And they'll do or say anything to be right. It, and then you start to resent each other. Sure. That's the issue. Are you that way? Uh, I think I used to be. I, I know so. I used to be. I'm not yeah. sure. I might still be. I I'm know I'm, no, I'm not for sure now. Because, you know, that's you do learn things from relationships. And one thing that I did learn was ain't about being right. Yeah, you know, you know what? I think the, 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 the biggest growth I had in that was I still, I still a lot of times do think I'm right. But there's no weight to it. Like right. if if like you saying that you could beat me in basketball is the most ridiculous statement in the world, but also like whatever. It's not though. Cut to a clip, and we're back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's gonna be no clips, <laughs> you know. Um, no, I, I. How much money did you make for BMO? Tell me. No. Over a mil? Under a mil? Shh, Ricky. A mil. Do you not want to talk about it because you don't want people to know, or do you think it's tacky for you to be public it's, with it's it? It's very tacky to be public. But you with don't care it. if, like, it gets leaked. You don't care if BMO says we paid Lamorne a million five. You're like, yeah, whatever. You just don't want to be the one getting it out there. Yeah, I don't care. I don't, That's I how I feel about a sex tape. I want someone to leak one of my sex tapes, but I can't do it. Really? Yeah. Well, Rick, put it out there, man. Oh, you want the world to know what Rick, what Rick be doing? Them, them things. I them, just the positions you be putting them in. I just think the that, pretzel maker. I just think it would help the yeah. podcast. You know what? We'll cut to a clip. Like and subscribe, and we're back. <laughs> Damn, Rick! I got.
cats to try that maneuver. <laughs> cats. It's, try just, it. it's called a uh, missionary. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. I've never done that before. What do you usually do? How do you, so you look at their face mm-hmm. while making love. Mm-hmm. Oh, Rick, that's new. What do you do? That's different. Me? <laughs> I'd be in the West. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Cut to a clip. And we're back. Oh. And we're back. Oh. So it looked like you were treating like like you were fucking a car. Well, everything is a ride with your boy. Oh. You know what I'm saying? You got to take him on a ride. got to oil that thing up. You know what I'm saying? got to keep the oil in there. got to keep that tailpipe clean. Hell yeah. So that exhaust can come out because it's healthier. You don't want that backed up exhaust in there. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this has been, this is good, man. Yeah. Hey, Lamorne, um, do you ever think you want to get into stand-up? Because uh, I, I think you would be funny. I'm so fascinated by stand-up. And I actually think I could be good at it, but I know the grind. I know how long it takes to be good. Yeah, but you do have a cheat. You, do, you don't have to get as good as everyone has to be to get to the place that they get to. That's true. People think, I go to comedy clubs and people let me write in because they think I'm a comic going up. Yeah. Because everything that I've, I do is comedically based. Yeah. So they think I am. But I just never, I just, nowadays with everyone's phones and, you know, I don't want to have a bad set testing out material. And then that goes online. People are like, this nigga ain't funny at all. This <laughs> nigga ain't funny. Like, God damn. Would that hurt you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah? But you, you, work, you work your butt off to get that respect comedically. I've been doing it for 12 years and I, that's the only, 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 those are the only comments I get. No, shut up. Rick, you crush. I've seen you stand up. The last set you came to was at the Laugh Factory. Mm-hmm. And I did that set. And then I went home for Thanksgiving, like the next day or two days later. And then I was booked again the, when I came back. So two weeks later, I had a show. And the day before, the Laugh Factory called me and said, you know, we got some complaints. And it's just, I think it's best if you don't. And I haven't, they haven't booked me since. I don't understand. I don't understand that. that you know. Incidentally, that set, they shared, the Laugh Factory shared on their Instagram like two weeks ago. Which is so weird to me. That you can't. I'm going to cut to a clip. How you feeling? You good? Hell yeah. What are you up to? What'd you say? Let me call you back. Yeah, let me call you back. I'm about to start my show. All right, all right. So, is anybody... Is anybody here celebrating any birthdays or... Yeah? Oh, cool. How, oh, nice. How old are you? Oh, you never ask a woman her age. Make sure she cheers on the one question where people do ask the age. Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here! Oh, I looked at the wrong. Shame on me. You could stay. And we're back. What did I tell you? That, that clip, that set was a set that you came to that they told me I can't come back to. But then they end up showing that clip. Yeah. I think the people that run the Instagram like me, but the people that run the club don't. Doesn't make sense. But and, for, and for that, I haven't been back since. The point I'm making is, it doesn't make me not want to do it anymore because people are like, fuck, he's not funny. Right. This makes you want to keep going until... I don't, know if it def- I don't know how it affects me. At least not consciously. It's just, I don't know if it does. It's just, I know I'm going to be funny... So I, th- I'm just going through it, and people right. are going to say things along the way. Right. I would love to see you on stage. I think I could do well. I think I could you want to go? Well, when, you know, um, you remember? I don't know if you saw that Will Smith did the show, and he had Chappelle help him out, and yeah. then Will did. It. He always wanted to do stand up. He did the first time. Let's do the C, D, or E version of that. Let me be Chappelle, and you be Will Smith. Dude, give me six months. Give me six months, and I'll be A list. So don't call me D, C, and D list. Well, I mean, th- yeah, those yeah, are two kings. Yeah, but they're like the like height, height, height. Doesn't mean anybody underneath them isn't a list. They're just above lists. Yeah, you're all right. Whatever. They're man. icons. Yeah, I don't have to be an icon at this moment, but to some people, I am. Rick, thanks. Who do you? Would you? There's some twelve year old girls out there who just discovered new girl who would call me iconic. Yeah, or do you have any DMs that you could send me from young girls? Nothing inappropriate that could say that you're iconic. 
Yeah, for sure. All right, send those to me. We'll put them up here. What's this? Let me just show you how easy it is. Okay. <laughs> not, a, not a game. Okay. Not, a, not a game, not a joke. Watch this, Rick. Okay. Get ready. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Hey, guys. <laughs> In an effort to prove a point, please send me DMs where you call me iconic. Thank you. Wait. Send it to me right now. Call me iconic. Say I'm an icon. And mention the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. Take Your Shoes Off podcast. It's and, asking me and, to do so. And say, click here, subscribe to it. Click here and subscribe to it. Click where? You're going to put a, a link to Take Your Shoes Off podcast. I'm going to put a link to the... This is Instagram, right? This is Instagram. Yeah, I'll just have you tag at Take... You know. I'm not doing all that shit. I understand. It I'm didn't even it. didn't feel right. Why don't we try it again? God damn. I say, God damn, Rick. God damn, you cute boy. Oh, what's up? It's Rick Glass from the Take Your Shoes Off podcast, and I'm here with Lamorne Morris. And boy, have we got news for you. We have, and then just we'll put the, the stuff in and post the list of I'm things. I'm just getting some of your books Howard Stern book, Judd Apatow book. These are your heroes. No, neither of them. I know who is. Who? <laughs> You're looking at him. God damn, your boy look good. So that's what we get. Are you going to do one and post it and really get people to do it? Because if so, do it and, and I want you to send me that video. Do it again? I just did it. You share it? I'm about to. No, do a better one. That was too long and stupid. You don't know me. Well, that's true. I don't know how to put take... Is there, is there an IG for take your shoes off? Yeah, shoes off. Shoes off pod. At shoes off pod. Okay, got it. Got it. Had to do that. That's definitely in there. <laughs> Shout out to the Rick Rickster. Take your shoes off podcast. Rick it's shoes off pod. Yeah, you got it? Yeah, got I it? got that in there. Um, all right, cool. All right, that's my time, y'all. I've always wanted to do that, too, on stage. That's good. <laughs> all right, that's my time, y'all. Yeah, I've, people always say I've been, and then they say their name, and I always think they're not anymore. <laughs> been, people say that? Yeah. Thank you guys so much. I've been Rick Glassman. Who are you now? <laughs> all, right, all right, relax, relax, relax. <laughs> So you've uh, you've told me a, a few times that you think, uh, and you you've worked with a lot of very talented people and funny people. You said th that I'm the funniest person you've ever met. Is that is that true? You're one of them for sure. Well, but you did say the, and then I started like kicking it with Chappelle every once in a while. Are you kicking it with him? Yeah, swear to God, swear to God. Could you get him on the podcast? It's possible. Could you get him on the podcast? It's possible. I don't know. He's busy, dude. You got to get him on here. I can try. All right. Well, I think this is done. But what I would like to do is, uh, I know. Are you farting? No. Oh. I know this is I know this is tacky. Wait. What? Did you just fart? No. I know this is tacky. Um no no, don't get up yet. It's fine. You've been blowing your nose all over the place. Well Lamorne's gonna leave and it but uh we do have a special treat. Denzel Washington is here. That was Lamorne Morris on Take Your Shoes Off Podcast. If you want to check him out, you can check him out at Lamorne something or other. What is it? At Lamorne, I think it's just Lamorne because nobody else has that name. Oh, you know what I wanted to say that I, I, I forgot that I should have done it at the beginning because I don't know if anybody listens to the entire podcast. I don't know if anybody ever gets to the end of these things. But I want to get on the new and, no, new and noteworthy on the iTunes podcast or the podcast app, whatever, if you have an iPhone. And people that listen on YouTube, I'm not sure if they also listen to it on the podcast app. So no obligations. But to the true go goblins out there, go on to help me out here. <laughs> If somebody else is editing this, take all that out. Just take it out. No, don't take it out. Leave it in. I want people to go and and subscribe on iTunes in the podcast app and give a five-star rating and leave a comment. I want to get enough people to do that where we get a new and noteworthy. I want this fucking thing to fucking take off, man. All right? We're about to have Chappelle on here. We're about to have Vin Diesel on here. My dad and Teddy are about to be on here again. You know, and follow at Shoes Off Pod on Instagram, at Rick Glassman on Instagram. I never plug this stuff. I never remember to. I need I need you to subscribe. Like, send it to people because, uh, you know, whatever. Oh, holy shit, Denzel Washington is here. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Denzel. Ah. Denzel, let me give you a little Purell. Oh, I just washed my hands already in the bathroom. <laughs> What were you doing in the bathroom? Oh, I was just taking a little leak. Yeah. <laughs> Draining the old lizard. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Liquefying my food. You understand what I'm telling you? That's a poop. No, no, no. It's a poop from the front. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Water can be the body's food as well. You understand what I'm telling you? Denzel. Yes. 
What's the, what, <laughs> what's your favorite movie that you've done? <laughs> favorite movie? That's a good question. Favorite movie? What movie have I done? The things that I've done, I I I, I, I appreciate. I I, uh, I hold all of them in a certain uh, amount of significance. They all hold a special place in my heart. <laughs> Yeah, so the film that I'm probably most proud of, numero uno at the top of my list. Huh? Huh? Ha ha! Is probably Malcolm X. Yeah, because it had such cultural change. It caused a dynamic and a shift in the way the world thinks. The movie itself or the what you portrayed? Oh, just the movie, not the real thing. <laughs> Nobody gives a damn about Malcolm X. They only care about me playing Malcolm X. You understand what I'm telling you? Eh? Yeah. Eh, I, sucker. I loved Hurricane and Training Day. Yeah, yeah. Training Day was good. Yeah, yeah. But I played a villain. And I don't, I'm not used to playing a villain because I'm everybody's hero and everybody knows it. Years ago, my agents asked me to put together a, a, a reel for Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. And on it, they needed me to do impressions. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I did an impression of you in Training Day. <laughs> we'll cut to a clip. And we're back. I didn't know if I was looking at myself or I was looking at a, a person doing an impression. That was pretty good, Rick Glassman. I also did one of Jada Pinkett Smith. We'll cut to a clip. <laughs> God damn, that's sexy. But I can't say that because as she is currently dating, a friend of mine. Married. Yeah, married, married. A friend of yours? Uh, yeah, Will Smith's a good dad. Uh, good, good, good buddy of mine. I, 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 we so you, we uh, spend some time on the, on the shores of uh, Caesarea Philippi. It's, uh, Where is that? It's, it's uh, east, east, far east. Far, far east. Uh, northeast. Uh, Redwoods. <laughs> well, that's about all the time that we have. Um, if you wouldn't mind taking a look to camera and signing this one off, um, Denzel, for uh, me, uh, for us, and let them know that they've been watching Take Your Shoes Off podcast and where we could find you and what your next, what you're working on now. Yeah, and you could find you could uh, yeah, you've been watching the uh, the uh, podcast. Take your shoes say, off for people that are only watching people, this. Say hello. I'm hello, hello for the people that are watching this. I am Lamorne Morris. No, and, well, uh, huh? ooh, ooh. <laughs> who am I now? <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. 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 And all the right. more Morris. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, you're so tapped into that thing. It's so good, dude. <laughs> You've been watching the Take Your Shoes Off podcast, eh? sucker. You understand what I'm telling you? And you can find me at uh, at, at Lamorne on Instagram. And then you can find also me in your cinemas. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. This week's guest was Lamorne Morris with a special guest, Denzel Washington-ish. My name is Rick Glassman, <laughs> signing off saying thank you. <laughs> so do, blabbity blue.